about artists paying victims to keep their name out of And I'm seeing like different celebrities. It was a rapper that we all know. Combs continued to move closer and then grabbed plaintiff's genitals through his pants, squeezing them in a rough and simple manner. Do you know if the notes from the book really were from Kim Porter? It was, yes, because I spoke to her um, probably like six hours before I got it. Joe Rogan has reportedly shared some serious and potentially damaging information about Diddy with federal authorities. Like the gremlins start eating <laughs> after midnight. <laughs> 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 Everybody Bro. tells the stories like I saw I go upstairs and these dudes are fucking yeah. like right on the couch. Yeah. And then I go in this room and these guys are fucking. And it's yeah. like this has reportedly landed Diddy in even deeper trouble with the authorities. I want to start with Tania Wallace, uh, who claims she's been at a free cough and said she saw children, and it was hard for her to say it. It was very hard for her to say it, Ashley. So what she said was. Um, that she was flown out from L.A. to Miami by the Saudi prince. Um, and they ended up eventually on Star Island at one of Diddy's parties. She says, you know, among many other things, I mean, she goes into detail. This, she says happened in 2018. Um, she says that um, she walked into the house and there was a cluster of adults around what she described as little people. Um, and they were dressed up as Japanese Barbies. Stay tuned as we dig deeper into this situation. But first, let's unpack the fallout from the new Diddy documentary. According to Ray J, major figures are allegedly paying off Diddy's supposed victims. He claims some people are pretending to be victims just to distance themselves from the controversy. Ray J also stated that certain A-listers are offering hush money, saying, I'll give you money, just don't talk. When Levine asked if this is happening right now, Ray J confirmed it's true. Documentary on Diddy, uh, the downfall of Diddy. Uh, this one is inside the freak ops. And we have told you about uh, what at least one person says happened at the freak ops. Um, now we wanna talk about fallout. Um, celebrities who may have been at some of these events, some of these freak ops, um, which is now the subject not just of a criminal investigation, but more than 120 civil cases as well. Right, and we told you that there are celebrities who are running scared, uh, worried that their name is gonna come out in public attached to any of these freak offs. And they are um, actually settling some of these cases, if you will. They're not really cases yet, but the civil lawyers have been sending demand letters to some of the people who are at these parties saying, pay up or we're gonna name you. And they don't wanna be named. And this is going on apparently a lot in Hollywood and there's someone who may be kind of at the center of all of this. And that person is Ray J, uh, who is telling us uh, what he has heard directly from celebrities about how they are handling this crisis. And it, believe me, to them, it is absolutely a crisis. In the interview, Ray J shed light on what he called a catch and kill practice paying people to suppress damaging information. He explained that some individuals know the truth but accept money to stay silent, believing the payment will bring them peace while the lies continue. Ray J also claimed that multiple high-profile people have been confiding in him, sharing their experiences involving Diddy. When asked by Levin if these individuals are worried about their connections to Diddy being exposed, Ray J confirmed that's exactly the case. At one point, he appeared to regret how much he had revealed, saying, I don't even know why I just said that, but I said it, so if they're mad, come get me. Despite this, he refused to share further details, saying he had already gone too far. And uh, he gave us a lot of information about what celebs are doing behind the scenes. I'm hearing about artists paying victims to keep their name out of it. You know people who have been uh, approached by women, men, whatever, um, who have said, give me money and I won't talk? Here's the other way around that, Harvey. I'll give you money, please don't talk. You are a well-connected guy. Um, do you know that th what you've just described, is that going on now? Yes. They wanna talk to me. They wanna talk to me about what happened to them. They call me. They feel like they can trust me. Wait a minute, calling you, calling you for what? Calling you for what? 
because they want to tell me about certain things that happened with them and Diddy. Ray, I, I, I want to make sure I understand this. Diddy, the music mogul, was arrested in September and has pleaded not guilty to charges including sex trafficking, racketeering, and prostitution. In addition, he's facing multiple sexual assault allegations. Attorney Tony Busby, who represents several of Diddy's alleged victims, hinted during a press conference that the public would be stunned by the names of Diddy's alleged accomplices. This has been a topic of speculation for quite some time. Houston lawyer who has more than 120 of these civil cases, and he said to us some really important things. Number one, he said there are celebrities, there are politicians and business people, all of whom um, they are reaching out to, and from the way it sounds, they have already sent some of them demand letters saying, pay up or we're gonna file a lawsuit against you. And then he said in this documentary, which I think is really ominous, um, even if you didn't do anything untoward at a free con, if you're a celebrity who was there or anybody who was there and you saw something going on where somebody was passed out and somebody was having mm -hmm. sex with that person and you didn't do anything, Tony Busby believes that those people are civilly liable and he's gonna go after them as well. Right, and, and, I, and clearly the approach here is he knows exactly what Ray J just said, that these celebrities right. are desperate to not be attached to it publicly in any way. Must be stressed that they are focused on building a strong case before releasing any additional names. He hinted that there could be quite a few names involved. The people who are his celebrity friends is gonna speak or say nothing until they're either contacted or they know what they really got. So you feel like they might be worried that they might be on tape at one of Diddy parties doing something they wasn't supposed to be doing? I think that the celebrities that may be worried is because what Lil Rob said. Lil Rob said in his affidavit that Diddy had every room taped and bugged. Diddy had, yo, bro, can you imagine he had every room tape and bug, and they found little bugs and little tape recorders. I mean, little, little, little those micro um, projectors or whatever like that, or video cameras. They found them in the house, bro. So by them having those things in the house, and people know there's drugs, there's alcohol, there's loose women, there's loose men, woman on woman, man on man, all kind of crazy shit. Bruh, they just wondering who or when they gonna let this stuff be known, if it's on video. In October, Busby told Asterisk TM's Asterisk that he had sent demand letters to several A-list celebrities who may have known about Diddy's infamous activities, giving them a chance to address the matter privately. Meanwhile, Shine recently spoke about his documentary and his past connection with Diddy during an appearance on the Asterisk Tamron Hall show Asterisk. The documentary, titled Asterisk, The Honorable Shine Asterisk, explores his journey from rap stardom to prison and ultimately becoming a political leader in Belize. It delves into Shine's rise in the 1990s music scene, his involvement in a high-profile New York nightclub shooting with Diddy, and his deportation to Belize, where he transitioned into politics. However, Diddy's past continues to follow him. In a recent interview, Natalia Rubin, a victim injured in the 1999 nightclub shooting, accused Diddy of placing a hit on her, which she claims forced her to flee Brooklyn for her safety. I'm a Brooklyn girl. I was born in Brooklyn. I was raised in Brooklyn. My family's from the Caribbean. Between, you know, whether we, it was times that we spent in the Caribbean or my life in Brooklyn, I'd considered myself a New York girl. I had no intentions of leaving. And probably had this happened, I probably would have never left. But when the district attorney's office gets information from one of their confidential informant sources saying that there's a bag on my head, and I'm calling the district, owners, uh, district attorney's office and I'm calling them, everybody because I look out my window where I was living in Canarsie, Brooklyn, and there's four stretch blacked out SUVs on, I, I lived on the corner. There's one on that corner, that corner, one in front of my house, one on the next corner. Why? Why? That's never happened to me before. I've never seen that. I live in a typical Afro-Caribbean community in uh, 
Canarsie, Brooklyn, that I had never seen that. But now I look out the window after I got shot by Puffy and all of these SUVs blacked out on the corners and on the blocks of my house. Why? Why? When the district attorney's office notifies me and my mother that they got confident and my attorney confidential information from an informant saying that there's a bag on my head and there was also a bag on Scar's head, what should I do? Sit there and wait for them to come? The 1999 shooting at Club New York in Manhattan left three bystanders injured. While Diddy and his bodyguard were acquitted, Shine was convicted and served 10 years in prison for his involvement. More recently, Diddy has firmly denied allegations that minors were present at one of his so-called freak-off parties. These claims came to light after Tana Wallace, featured in the documentary Asterisk, The Downfall of Diddy, inside the freak-offs Asterisk, alleged she attended a party hosted by Diddy in 2018. Documentary that dropped on Tubi on the downfall of Diddy. This one is called Inside, Inside the Freak-offs. And um, we have a lot of information on what goes down at some of these freak-offs um, that is really, really interesting. We should kind of preface this information, we should say, from first-hand, first-hand people who were actually there. So we should preface this by saying, you know, look, in the documentary, we also talked to lawyers and others, and we know that other celebrities, other than Diddy, are in their sights. That there are lawyers now who have actually made dem sent demand letters to other celebrities who were at some of these parties um, for various reasons. Some were just there. Some allegedly participated in things that went south. And um, so with that backdrop, we spoke with a woman named Tania Wallace. Tania was, lived in Los Angeles. I think she still does. And this was in 2018. Um, and she says a Saudi prince had flown her out to Miami and ultimately taken her to Star Island at Diddy's house. Right, and when she uh, got to this party, again in 2018, um, well, she described, we're gonna get to what the really disturbing thing she says she saw, but what everyone wants to know is about these celebrities. Um, this is what she said about that particular party. So there, there, there are people doing drugs, there are people having sex. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm seeing like different celebrities. It was a rapper that we all know. I'm not gonna say his name, but he came and was like, hey you, and got the feeling on me. You said you saw celebrities there. Roughly how many people that you recognized? Three or four. And you said one was a rapper. Were they all in music? Yeah. And all famous? Yeah. And all participating? Oh, yeah. This rapper, what I am going to say is, I'm used to seeing them dress a different type of way at this party. Two earrings on, and I'm looking like, he sure do look different when he's over here. These new allegations have surfaced amid an ongoing federal investigation into Diddy's alleged involvement in sex trafficking and racketeering. Some speculate that the parties in question were part of a larger illegal operation. However, Diddy's legal team maintains that the accusations are baseless and will be disproven in court. In a related development, Courtney Burgess, a witness in the investigation, testified before a grand jury in the Southern District of New York. Burgess claimed to have received 11 flash drives containing at least eight sex tapes involving celebrities, alleging that two or three of the individuals featured were minors. Were issued and executed based on uh, the federal authorities' knowledge um, that these flash drives existed and, and had this kind of compromising material. I think it was based on statements that Mr. Burgess made in a prior interview. And those statements include descriptions of what the witness says he saw on those tapes. So I asked him about that, and he answered what he could, given the limitations imposed on him after testifying before the grand jury. Out of those eight videos, eight celebrities, six men and two women, how many of those eight celebrities um, were, were close to being underage or potentially two. underage? Two males. Two males. And of those eight celebrities, how many of them were intoxicated um, or under the influence of drugs? Uh, 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 this is going to be all speculation. I just want to preface it by he wouldn't know appear if they to be. were. Right, sure. appear to Let be. Let me rephrase right. it. Based on, yes. Understand. Out of the eight celebrities, 
um, who were recorded having intimate relations with Sean Combs, how many of them appeared to be either inebriated or intoxicated or into the influence? All of them. All of them. Out of those eight, how many appeared to be potentially victimized? How many might have been victimizing? I think um, all, to be honest, all. Were, were victims they or victims. were perpetrating? Victims. They were all eight were victimized, yeah, meaning victim. this was happening to them and they were inebriated. Right. Not knowing, I guess, how much proof it was in it. But. The flash drives were reportedly given to Courtney Burgess by Kim Porter, Diddy's former girlfriend, before her death. Received on the flash drives, was it the completed book or was it notes from Kim Porter that later were made into a book? It was completed. It's only 60, okay. only, the, only about 54 pages was completed. Sure, and in the beginning, it says, Kim made me promise that if something happened to her, I would make sure this book became public to the world. The way Sean moved, I knew that was a promise I would have to fulfill. Kim knew I was a woman of my word, and this book was going to make it to print. So it sounds like it is a woman who wrote um, up the notes from Kim Porter. Does that sound accurate? It's, it's how you read it, yes. I haven't even read the book. Do you know who the woman is? No. And and to be clear, he received it in its complete form. So I think just to make sure we have some clarity here, yeah. the manuscript that Mr. Burgess received was already in its complete form. Um, it's not did, that he ate, uh, edited it or changed anything. Got it. Um, he did give it to someone Makes else who, who then edited it, but that's not how he received Our it. Okay, so Ariel, did um, did your client Courtney receive the book from the woman who seems to have written it, saying, "I'm a woman of my word, and this book is going to make it to print." I don't know if he received it from a man or a woman. He can answer. That. I received it from a man. I tell you, some somebody she was dating. Do you know if the notes from the book really were from Kim Porter? It was, yes, because I spoke to her um, probably like six hours before I got it. On October 14th, six more accusers filed lawsuits against Diddy. Two men claimed they were sexually assaulted by him at separate white parties in the Hamptons, one of them only 16 at the time. One woman, identified as Jane Doe, claimed that Diddy forced her into a hotel room in 2004 when she was 19. Another accuser claimed that Diddy forced him to perform oral sex on him in 2008 inside a Macy's stockroom, while another man alleged he was drugged and assaulted at a party in 2021. Says he was sexually assaulted at a party promoting Ciroc. This a party apparently happened in Los Angeles in or around 2022. It was hosted by Ciroc and Diddy, who owned some stake in the company and was a celebrity spokesperson for the drink. Prior to this party, John Doe had a long-standing relationship with Diddy. John Doe is a businessman in LA whose company specializes in renting luxury cars and jewelry. In the past, John Doe had rented cars or jewelry to Diddy and members of his entourage. John Doe showed up at this party after Diddy himself personally extended an invitation. John Doe agreed based on his past relationship with Diddy. At the party, John Doe noticed some pretty high profile celebrities in both the entertainment and music industry. His lawsuit includes some pics of this, with Diddy on the couch discussing his Ciroc business with other high-profile people. The lawsuit goes on to state that during the event, Combs instructed John Doe to join him in Combs' private office. Plaintiff went into the office where the two were alone. Plaintiff assumed Combs wanted to have a discussion about business. However, Plaintiff immediately realized Combs was intoxicated and acting strangely. Combs began awkwardly moving closer to Plaintiff. As he did so, Combs removed his pants and exposed his genitals to plaintiff. Combs continued to move closer and then grabbed plaintiff's genitals through his pants, squeezing them in a rough and sexual manner. Plaintiff, shocked and disoriented, froze momentarily and did not know how to respond to the weirdly inappropriate sexual advances made by Combs. This situation apparently escalated until someone, referred to as Professional Athlete A, entered the office and interrupted this assault. John Doe left the party and went home, but took a picture of the Ciroc box. We're keeping it brief so you don't get overwhelmed by the details, but the situation's pretty grim. Do you think Diddy will get away with this? 
Share your thoughts in the comments below.